Hey guys, this is Mitch with Finepoint CGI, and today we're going to talk about some of the rendering differences with Godot 3.0 and Godot 4.0. As you know, Godot 4.0 is moving to its new Vulkan renderer, so I thought it would be a fun time to go ahead and do a small comparison video or kind of just a, a first look at how the new Vulkan renderer looks. So... With that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at a scene I made in both 3.0 and 4.0. So let's do a side by side comparison here. So the lighting just looks so much better. The reflections, look at that that little pole right there. It looks so much nicer. The shadows are more dynamic and it looks like they're more crushed and the than what I would have expected. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the cool features and differences inside of Godot. So the first thing that you will notice from this is that the scene's temperature is way more blue. And that is due to the fact that we can now actually change that. So if we go to our world environment, here's a bunch of new uh, features here. And I'll go through a lot of these as time goes on. But you can see here that we actually have a new adjustments tab here with color correction of a curve XYZ texture. Whereas previously in previous iterations of Godot, and let me resize this for you. This is the old scene. In previous iterations of Godot, you were unable to actually make those adjustments. So if I actually click on my color correction, you can't actually add in a XYZ curve texture like you can over there. So it gave me a lot more fine-tuned control over top of how I presented my image or my product. Something else you'll notice is the scene itself has a lot more darks. Like if you look over here, you can see here, look at all that dark. That is because of a new feature inside of Godot called SDFGI. And what this does is signed distance field global illumination. And what it does is it uses signed distance fields, which is a lot of fancy words for basically saying uh, a grid of some kind, right, to create lighting. So if I shut this off, you'll see what we get for lighting. And then if I turn this on, you'll see that suddenly it reads all this stuff in a grid. So if I actually kind of scroll out here, actually, let me go into my camera and go into preview mode. There we go. Pull this over some. And if I go ahead and go into my environment and I shut off SFGI, you'll see, look at how big of a difference this makes. It makes a massive difference in your shadows. It makes them a lot, it crushes them a lot. It makes them seem a lot better than what they were before. One other major feature change is your glow. You can see that my glow seems softer, it's nicer, it feels better, whereas previous ones, the glow feels a little rougher around the edge. If you actually go and take a look at your glow, you can actually only turn on and off the different values here. So I can say, oh, I don't really like this glow or I do like this glow. And you can see how I can turn it off and on, but I can't really determine the amount. Whereas over here on this one, I can actually determine the amount. So I can actually kind of bring in my glow as much as I would like and really fine tune it to make it look good. 
So that's one of the really cool advantages of this new system. Something else you'll notice, and this is just in this area, is we have a much more accurate SSAO, and you really can't tell, but it does make a big difference here. Something else that you will also notice is the addition of volumetric fog. So you can see how there's this nice little haze across everything. If I were to shut this off, you can see what it would look like versus if I turn it on. So that volumetric fog really helps make everything just kind of come together and make it look a lot more realistic. Whereas on the other end, if we go ahead and we take a look, there is no volumetric fog, so it seems really flat and kind of boring, right? So that's one major feature that is in here is volumetric fog makes it so much better. And even if you pull back your depth uh, end and you pull it forward quite a bit, so there's a lot more of it, it still just doesn't look very good. And you can kind of mess with your depth curve to kind of try to make it look good, but really it's it's rough at best to make it look good now something else you'll notice is there's these cool little decals on the side these are actually decals like that exists now in godot 4 so you can actually come over here and you can see here if i click on this decal providing i can select it something i have noticed with the new version of godot is that the decals or just selecting anything in godot is complicated um, but you can see here I can actually move these around and I can kind of pull them backwards and forwards and that will help make it kind of uh, disappear a little bit. You can also rotate it so that it's a little bit more reasonable and uh, change how it's placed. You can see it's got this little line here and this little line actually tells you where it's projecting to. So if I wanted it to be flatter against the wall, I could do that and then pull it up and it would project completely flat against the wall. If I were to rotate it a tiny bit, you'll see that it kind of projects it kind of at this angle here. So it kind of adjusts the projection angle. So that's one of the other really cool new features is with decals. And something that is gonna have to be looked at is how you can do a mission as well. I have a feeling that you could totally make some kind of uh, flashlight or something like that here and that would really make a cool system. So something else that's been changed is the ability to adjust how your shadow actually uh, looks. So if you take a look at your shadow menu here, you can see that there's a normal bias, which was there beforehand, and it allows you to kind of adjust kind of where your uh, shadow is. You can see it as it kind of makes its uh, changes here. So you can see how it's moving this shadow over left and right. It also lets you set up your bias, which will allow you to cut out some of those uh, nasty um, lines here. You can actually pull this forward and see how it pulls that out. Like that. And you can also see that they added in some other transmission biases, which we don't have because this is for uh, transparent objects. And they also added in fog fade, which you're not really gonna see too well because if we kind of mess around with it, you'll see that nothing's really changed. But as you zoom out, you'll notice that the fog, the, the actual fog that we have here, will start fading out the shadow. And the last little feature that they added is blurring. If you actually take this and you pull it down, you'll see that this becomes really sharp, but if I pull this forward, you'll see that it starts making it way smoother. So it gives you a lot of control on how your shadow is gonna be perceived. Whereas the previous system really only had, uh, if it's enabled, it's color, it's bias, it's contact, and it's reverse face call. So that's something that really helps with the lighting in this scene because it allowed me to fine tune how this uh, looked. Now, one other thing that you will notice if I kind of run in here is the shininess of metallics have changed quite a bit too. If I click on this Omni light and I go ahead and adjust it, let me actually turn it on because I have a, 
a flicker animation. So let's just go like that. And that should turn it on real quick. Or maybe not. Oh, it's not happy with me. So one thing that really is frustrating about um, 4.0 is that it seems to crash a lot. And it's really kind of slow and performance obviously sluggish i mean that's to be expected with an application that's in uh dev mode i mean you can see right here it's a dev build it's literally something i built today so it's not unexpected to run into these bugs okay this is a very common thing to to see and i don't hold it against the game engine although now my performance has just absolutely tanked so if we take a look at our yeah, so you can see all these errors here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and reboot this and I'll be right back. All right, so now that I'm back, performance is back to normal. So that's good news. Um, something else that you'll notice is that objects are a little shinier than they were before. So if I kind of come down here and we take a look, you can see how shiny this object is. That is because of how Vulkan renders things slightly different than how OpenGL does. So it makes things a little shinier, a little more realistic, a little nicer. So that's awesome. So the last major feature that I'd like to talk about is in the project settings. So if we go out to project, project settings, you can see here there's a toggle here called advanced settings. So if we actually look at all of our settings, we look at like our rendering settings, you can see that we have like rendering, Vulkan and textures, right? And we can kind of set up some small performance optimization stuff here, but that doesn't really give us the full picture. So Godot has given us this advanced settings toggle. So if we go ahead and click on that, you can see if I scroll down, you can see how much additional stuff we have. So we have stuff like driver information. So we can do like, you know, different single say or uh, uh, different threading models. We can do stuff like different buffer sizes and rendering settings. We can literally change and force our uh, PNGs and do things like MIP map filtering, anisotropic filtering, and all of our different filterings for our decals and canvases. You know, we can really come through here and really change how our scene is perceived and we can actually change the quality settings of our projects. Now, the reason why this is super useful is you could uh, set all of these projects up in your options menu to really fine tune how the user experiences your game. So for instance, you're having a little bit less performance on your machine, you could expose soft shadow quality and allow users to say, oh, well, I'm okay with having 30 FPS as long as it looks good. Or you have people who are like, I, I'd like it to look less as good, but get like 120 FPS. So it really exposes a lot of new features. You know, we have all these 2D features, all of these 3D features, some shader features, a bunch of reflection features. So you can actually change how your reflections look. Some global illumination features, you know, reducing your GI or your SF. G S D F G I or some shading overrides. So you can actually force shaders. If you'd like, you can force uh, different camera settings, like different uh, depth of field settings. You can adjust some environment settings. So you can actually change how much detail your like subsurface scattering has and things like that. Same thing with anti-aliasing. So you can see I have FXAA on, I can actually show you guys if I disable FXAA, you can see that there's a little bit of jagginess. Like if you look at this right here, there's a little bit of jagginess there. So if I turn it on, oops, I clicked the wrong thing. If I turn it on, you'll see that that jagginess just kind of goes away. So that's kind of the cool thing about um, the system is that you really can do all sorts of stuff. And you can see I turned on like occlusion calling, right? So I can actually occlude stuff. Uh, light map changes so we can actually go in and fine tune exactly how our baking is going to be handled same thing with xr we actually have xr settings you can actually go out and do you know vr and ar stuff and same thing with mesh lod something that they're adding is automated mesh lod 
And having that in here is going to really help with 3D. So what are my final thoughts on this? And should you upgrade today, right? Uh, my final thoughts is this is a huge upgrade for Godot. I mean, you can look at just how it looks. I mean, it it's literally a complete redesign of the 3D engine, and it definitely shows. Now, the next question is, should you upgrade? And I'm a little hesitant to say yes, not because of the new features or anything like that. If you're creating a 3D game, and you're willing to deal with the bugs, I definitely think checking it out is a good idea. But if you are shifting a project that you currently are working on into 4.0, you're gonna have a mammoth effort and you're gonna be dealing with a lot of bugs. One of the things you guys saw earlier, I had performance issues just out of nowhere. Or if I actually open up my terminal here, you can actually see, like look at that, I'm, I'm having all these errors just flying by. So, it's something that um, needs to be ironed out before I would suggest this for a professional level application. But on the bright side, it's way farther than it was six months ago when I took a look at it. I mean, six months ago, I tried to open this application up and it didn't even run. And now I have a fully lit scene in it. It took me a long time and a lot of crashes, but it actually works. So those are some of the major features of Godot 4.0 in Vulkan Renderer. Now, as I dig deeper into this, I'm sure I'm going to be making more videos on Godot 4. But that is all I have for you guys today. So if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Hey, you know, if you dislike this video, go ahead and hit that dislike button because I am here to make content for you guys. Now, this was a viewer suggested video. So if you have any viewer suggested videos, go ahead and throw them in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to add them to my Trello board. Link is in the description if you want to check that out. And if you have any questions or comments about Godot 4.0, you can either throw them in the comments below or, hey, hit me up on my Discord. Link is also in the description below. But that is all I have for you guys today. So thank you so much again for watching, and I will see you all next time. Thanks.